previously on Hades Developing Hell. Our fourth game is called Hades. It's a narrative-driven roguelike. I think having people know what we're working on really changes the vibe because we get to see sort of people's reaction to the stuff that exists already in the game. Hopefully with these big updates, we do get uh, people to come back and re-engage with the game. It's really important to us because that means we get the feedback that we want so that we can make the next one a good one and around and around we go. It felt like we blinked and all of 2019 had flown by um, and kind of thought it might go that way uh, with the early access development thing. It definitely keeps uh, the pace around here brisk because we've always got our eye on trying to wrap up the major update that we happen to be working on and no sooner does that one come out that we're already uh, planning the one after that. and. Turns out you can get through a year pretty quickly uh, going through that kind of process. So we got through eight major updates in our first year of early access development. We had the chaos update, we had the good times update. The beefy update where you fight Theseus and the Minotaur in the shades of Elysium. Uh, we did the high speed update where we introduced the Olympian Hermes and all sorts of movement based and dash based powers. In August, we had the Big Bad update, which introduced uh, the final area of the game, the final uh, boss fight, um, all kinds of other stuff like that. We celebrated our 10th anniversary. Uh, we went to PAX, uh, all kinds of wild stuff in August, um, and announced that uh, Hades was going to be coming to Steam uh, later in that same year. The next two updates after that were mostly focused on kind of the game's replayability in two parts. The Superstar update was about making sure the game was highly replayable for all players for a really, really, really long time. And we did that by kind of taking inspiration from games like Slay the Spire with their ascension system and, and other things like that to try and put together a, a heat ladder where you uh, take each of the weapons, which are kind of like our version of our game's classes, and um, slowly advance them to the ranks in order to get bounties, which you use to then upgrade your weapons. And then we had the Welcome to Hell update uh, in December of 2019, where we introduced legendary keepsakes and deeper relationship building and all sorts of stuff that people have been asking for for a long time. You know, legendary keepsakes are where you, you get close to someone, they give you like a stuffed animal. Um, that allows you to summon people into your run um, and that was, that was also really fun because that's the combination of all the things that work really well for us in Hades, which is like when the world and the mechanics and the gameplay and the structure and all that stuff comes together, uh, to make you feel like you're playing a uniquely super giant thing. So prior to the Steam launch, the things we knew we had were a game that some of our uh, most hardcore early adopting fans really, really liked. A game where they enjoyed our early access and being a part of it, update on update. Uh, a game that we had the sense from our internal playthroughs and from the playthroughs with the community um, that was getting better every time. But there's a chance that the feedback we were getting was not necessarily representative of like all players. And I think for us, there is always sort of this question of like, well, what, you know, well, what will happen um, when, it, when it makes the next jump? That was the first worry. Second worry, of course, was will fans sort of accept it um, for what it is? Will they accept the decisions we made to that point um, that we made because we thought it would make for a better game overall? Uh, for a better development process, allow us to learn, allow our fans to learn with us. So there's definitely some fear that like, even if the game was uh, 
was kind of acquitting itself well and representing itself well that, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, players may not like accept it on Steam um, or may uh, try to uh, kind of express their displeasure with some of the decisions that we made to that point um, with the tools that Steam gives you. All of our games have been on Steam and it's, uh, I believe it's our single biggest uh, audience in, in total. So our games have been on, on all sorts of different consoles and uh, different computer platforms, mobile devices, stuff like that. But all of our games are on Steam and that's where we have uh, quite a dedicated following from over the years. So we knew uh, bringing Hades to Steam was going to be a big deal. Though when we were starting out and knowing that we were going to make an early access game for the first time, and on top of that, an early access roguelike game. If, if that's all you know about what we're working on, it's, and you're a fan of our previous games that are known for being these kind of compact experiences with a discrete beginning, middle, and end, the idea Supergiant making an early access roguelike is actually pretty concerning on the face of it. It's like, what? Like, that, that's not what I want from these guys. They're known for their, their kind of atmosphere and their beautiful artwork and their uh, their stories and, and their, their kind of like intricately woven uh, narrative and gameplay and all this kind of stuff. Why are you making an early access roguelike? That sounds like you can't do any of the stuff that you guys are normally good at in that kind of format. But knowing we were going to do the early access thing for the first time ever, that was something where we knew full well we needed to kind of learn to walk before we learned to run. So we did not want to start that process uh, in front of what's historically been our biggest audience uh, for whom there's only one chance uh, to make a good first impression. It made much more sense to us uh, to start our early access uh, in a place where uh, we knew that some of our most dedicated players would definitely be there, help us, uh, help give feedback, and while we kind of learned the ropes, uh, improved our uh, development process of actually uh, kind of managing uh, early access because it's so different. Um, from a production standpoint, how we work now compared to how we've worked in the past. And also just straight up make the game way better through that process. Um, we, I think through the course of those eight major updates, we, I, I say we more than tripled the size of the game. What folks got when we first launched in December of 2018 versus what they got in December of 2019 is, is like, I think, a, quite a substantially different game, a game that's uh, now we could safely say is the biggest game we've ever made already. And we also had a sense that the decisions we had made to that point were uh, very consistent with our values as a studio. Like, uh, we didn't announce the game for Steam and then pull it or something like that. Um, we, you know, we had announced the game for the Epic Game Store. Um, we had explained our reasoning for doing so. We had talked about how uh, it would be coming to Steam eventually and now we're doing what we had talked about. And even just doing what we said though, it doesn't mean that people wouldn't be angry about it. They have every right to be, um, however, you know, to feel however they want. People, people are very emotionally attached to, to games and to the platforms they play games on. And, and I think uh, a common kind of affliction of all creators and game developers is to focus on the part that worries you um, even in the face of overwhelming evidence uh, that things are probably going to be okay. Um, and so, you know, we knew there was a lot of demand for it. Um, we were excited to meet that demand. Um, we just couldn't have guessed how that was going to go. Uh, my name is Caitlin Sales and my official job title is Office Assistant. My main touch point for Hades is usually Discord and also our actual website um, support ticket system. There is sort of like an element to community stuff that does feel a little bit like a watch position just because if things come up or if people are having issues or if people are being particularly loud about something, it's my responsibility to escalate it to make sure that it gets seen. I think one of the most common responses to our game usually tends to be that they want to see really specific gods. As we've updated, we've added more and more from the Pantheon and from Greek mythology. You know, you've, you're dealing with a source material that has literally thousands of years of fans. People want to see Hercules, um, even though in our it's game- He's not a god, right? He's not, well, uh, well. 
<laughs> I'm actually true. I'm actually a big Greek mythology nerd, so it's right. like you're asking these questions and it's just opening a Greek mythology can of worms. I took ancient Greek in college, A, because I like mythology, but B, because it's not an oral language, uh. so I didn't have to take an oral test. So people really want to see Hercules, who in our game would probably be Heracles. Before we added the weapon aspects, um, especially some of the not more minor gods, but not on the pantheon gods, like Nemesis, uh, occasionally cropped up. I had someone uh, recently send us a ticket requesting to see Iris, who is the goddess of rainbows, and they were like, I don't know, maybe she just makes rainbows <laughs> when you're fighting, or like gives you a completely random boon when you meet her, and, and it's a sweet idea. I don't know what the likelihood of it is, but I think it's a sweet request. My favorite Greek myth character is Hermes. Um, but I think my favorite, he's, he's one of my favorites in, in the game for sure. Achilles, Athena, um, Dusa. Um, Did I read on your bio, this is months ago now. I played you, Athena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, have, I have played Athena. I didn't look anything as cool as our Athena. Um, but I, I wore these like eight inch platform shoes, so I was six I was six four. It was really fun. Yeah, I think uh, probably Achilles and Chaos. Chaos, they are also my, my favorite. Um, I just sort of like, vaguely threatening mentor figures, I think is really what it is. Like Achilles is full of love, but he's also a famous Greek warrior who killed a lot of people and chaos is is the literal concept of chaos who definitely seems to care for Zagreus, but how much can entropy really care about you, you know? Okay, Greg, you have to take any structural changes, how the death moment should work. Launching on Steam is, is a, quite a big deal for us because uh, it starts, there, there are just so many details that go into it. One of the things uh, I was uh, quite busy with was just uh, preparing our, our Steam page itself for launch. Um, the Steam page is kind of your, your hub, making sure players know what kind of game you have, um, what's interesting about it, and uh, provide answers to all the questions that you anticipate they might have. We worked with a gentleman named Sean Finney to create this new trailer-esque uh, video that we uh, launched right alongside the game on Steam. And it's the it's kind of the biggest such video we've ever made. It's uh, normally we would say like, oh man, a trailer should never exceed about 90 seconds. But this is like a full three minutes long, kind of going through everything that there is about about the game. Um, you guys need to watch it here. So I would come come up because we, we were gonna lose Josh. It wasn't. Walkie, walkie, walkie. This is a too fast Your part. Agreed. And the gun shouldn't be in shotgun mode. I like this part. All right, so then um, from the structural changes, just going through section by section, I think that it was good. Um, I thought it had the right stuff and it went in the right order. Um, the structurally, the only part like let's say we're gonna keep our feedback to like what he actually shows in each yeah. each section when we do the time code stuff. Yeah. Structurally, only the weapon part felt like way off to me in terms yeah. of like it was like so 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 fast. Yeah, showing all of the weapons similar with like all the gods, we just don't have time for it. So yeah. it's probably like show two and then have some like and many more. You know, when you're on Steam. You're not really there to like bask in the cinematic experience of some like slow atmospheric trailer. You just want to know what are you getting? What does it look like? What stuff is in it? And ultimately, you know, is this a game? Is this a game for me? That's your question. That decent chunk of the footage that he's chosen for obvious reasons, because it's cool. Like when you look at it, it's like explosive. Yeah, it's just like, oh, there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a part at the beginning of the room when you have like two guys to fight, and the part that he's chosen, which is when this room is full. Sure, of shit. we we should call we should call we those can out. Call those out we, specifically, yeah. Uh, so that, it, yeah. We've, he also we've, he also made some choices that I thought were really good. I agree because he chose some fights that were like when he chose yeah, yeah, the yeah, nemesis yeah. aspect, for yeah. example, is one of the moments where I was yeah. like, this is actually pretty. Yeah. yeah so so clear. again, I I, I just want to make the distinction that we should identify the specific yes, parts that totally are cluttered agree. as opposed to, to giving them the feedback that it's all... Totally, I totally agree with that, and I think one of the parts is for the weapon. If you yeah. want to show the weapons, don't yeah, have yeah. a lot of other shit happening, just like, like have the weapon shooting and like... Yeah, you know. the Sword Nova, you just want to see yeah, it like hit one or two guys. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. So in addition to all the stuff that's just kind of standard on a Steam page, for early access games, there's a whole a why early access type of section. It's a whole big kind of, it's almost like an interview format that you have to fill out. It's a Q&A uh, type of format 
Um, and uh, we wanted to fill that out in thorough detail so that, uh, again, anyone you know, with, with kind of particular questions like, how far along is it? When's it going to be done? There are things like, are you going to raise the price when it's done or change the price in some way? Um, all those things are covered in this uh, FAQ type of format. Um, and then we also have to prepare our, our STEAM forums. For us, we really wanted to preempt a lot of that discussion by introducing ourselves. Um, as soon as the game launched, we had a technical support FAQ. So any uh, questions about can't get the game to run, anything like that, we start gathering that information and putting those answers out there. So uh, the, the commonly uh, brought up issues it can get resolved quickly. And just trying to be um, active and attentive in there as much as possible. If we're going to officially accept feedback on, on Steam, then we should um, then we should have a process there too. So it's kind of like derived from, it's not, it, it lacks the formality of uh, Hades feedback in Discord, but it has the recommendations of like, hey, at least do these things and we're going to moderate this forum more heavily than general, general discussions. It, it's, it's important to us and being present to respond to concerns or answer folks' questions before there's like any community to answer those questions. I, I think it's just, an important part of this type of launch. It's been really important that we kind of read everything um, and that we look at everything um, and that someone on the team has seen it all uh, because uh, we don't want to miss anything because we know that any player out there who gives us a note is probably representative of like dozens or hundreds or thousands of other players. I, I want to take the stance of let's build up our Discord here. I'll take you know, one bad actor out of a hundred good ones um, as, a, as a consequence of like growing the community because um, we'll just ban that person. Um, so it, someone who gets into that, because like, they click to expand it, like they're already very it's too much. excited about it. Like if they get it to it there, it's fine. It's mostly like if it's, if, if we'll join our Discord yeah. is the first thing, you yeah. know, yeah. For sure. the exit section yeah. that you saw. Tell, tell, tell us what you think about our business decisions <laughs> in our Discord. <laughs> yeah, then we'll hear about it. But it's it's just tucked away enough, um, yeah, to where hopefully it's. And also, obviously, um, if we if it is bad for some reason, we, we just remove it, right? Like, yeah, if we're getting flooded, we can yeah, just, turn, just, just turn walk it back. back. Yeah. The first thing I look at is is actually just store traffic. Um, you know, are people coming to the page? Where are they coming from? Um, are they coming right away because of? Uh, our messaging, are they coming uh, at a slower clip because um, someone else is talking about it um, or because it's being featured on the platform uh, in some capacity. And then the next thing you look at is the, the raw wishlist number, but also uh, the relationship between the number of unique users coming in and the wishlist is also really important. Got a good trailer and got a good store page. Hopefully you're converting those uh, eyeballs at a pretty high clip. Um, and if you aren't Converting those into wish lists it could be a whole bunch of issues. One could be price, one could be availability elsewhere. Um, maybe they want to play on a console, but they, the Steam page is the only thing that's open. Um, or maybe you need to go back and rethink how, how all those marketing assets are, are built because you're not telling a, a story that is engaging customers in, in your product long term. Hades has been localized into English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Korean, Russian, Brazilian, Portuguese. We'll just cut the other languages I didn't count. <laughs> I, I forget how many languages it was. It was, yeah, I, it, I think that was all of them. Polish. I am sorry, Poland. I'm sorry. You know, the Epic Game Store was, as a news storefront, was really focused in on uh, Western audiences and, and, and Steam being such a mature platform with a ton of different currencies and payment processors. Bringing in um, China and Korea uh, was a real big focus. Um, and so adding localizations uh, was a big part that we decided to do there in the last phase. So that, that was one of the ways that we uh, looked at the data that we saw before launch and where people were coming to the page from. So that's all a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't even uh, you know, it doesn't even come by, uh, it doesn't even say anything about all the work we were doing on the game itself. It's like, here's another really critical milestone for this game. And what happens now is absolutely going to influence kind of everything that happens from here on out. If this is a total disaster, our lives are going to be a certain way for a long time. If this goes wonderfully, it's also going to change things. Um, so it's kind of going to be a lot of work. Uh, no matter what, but I'd rather have the work on the 
on the positive side of things than on the disaster side of things. And so we just try to prepare um, as much as possible and anticipate as many of the issues um, as we felt we might run into, of which there were many, many, um, and just kind of hang on to our seats. What are you doing over here, Greg? I'm setting up um, a couple of new discussion forums uh, on, on Steam um, before things get too hectic. I just set up a technical support discussion. You're just waiting on the game to go live before you do the post? No, I'm gonna do the post oh, right nice. now. Yeah, so it should, if I refresh now, it should just show up here. Um, so uh, the old release my app, and check the pricing. You, yeah, efficient. the build is all staged, yeah. yeah. Uh, pricing looks good. This is the gift copy set up. All right, publish now. Test my typing. So. Uh, great, the game's live. Game's live? The game's live. Congrats. Five, huh? We haven't announced it yet though, right? No, no, yeah, it's a 10, right? Ten. It's just a soft launch. It's live! It's live. It's live. It's live. It's live. It's live. It is live. Sweet. Launched a video game. <laughs> and now I'm trying to launch a DLC. I built here. Uh, which one? Who what? Uh, we download Hades off of Steam, which makes sure place. I mean, I have it on Steam. I was playing it yesterday through Steam. Do you mean a different. Just uninstall it and download it again. Got it. Just in case. And then so we have two bundles for, for Hades. We have the Hades Plus Soundtrack bundle, uh, ah, which I am going to set live right now, which includes the game and the soundtrack, surprisingly, uh, with awesome gen art. And then we have the Supergiant Collection bundle, which is also going live today, um, which has been live, but was taken down so that we could uh, retool it. And now we're going to relaunch it with 80s in it. No user reviews. You're gonna be the first? Where's my mom when I need her? <laughs> yeah. you know, so we did a year of early access updates and I spent some time this morning just like looking at what the game looked like before it entered early access on, <laughs> on the Epic Game Store. So these are from the first year of development. Just screenshots taken a couple months apart. Our first attempt at our opening room and I have a new all sorts of other random stuff. What Acidel looked like at the very beginning. <laughs> it's just like it seemed like a good time to remind ourselves of where we started with it. Is the nostalgia helping you through the stress of no, launching the game today? Honestly, it's just giving me something to do because Greg and Will are doing most of the things. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna give myself something to do. I'm gonna look at old screenshots. I'm just gonna re-upload a copy of the trailer just in case like as a new trailer we can always swap it The only difference should be that the thumbnail is correct, but maybe it'll magically fix the quality For, like, really So this is the uh, real-time users no, like, same, same reason why a lot of them And that makes sense. Yeah, yeah all I, I will do that Because <laughs> they're awake because they're awake ready to play uh, People coming in from Facebook and Twitter, we're off the races. We'll, uh, we'll see how far it goes. Launch days uh, at Supergiant, I think, have a tendency to be pretty anticlimactic because they're just kind of busy. My, my, my fantasy of it is the nice, you know, ch champagne toast, huzzah, you know, congratulations, pats on the back all around. We did it, we got there, but it's just, it just never goes that way. It's just people at their, like, you go into it expecting a bunch of stuff to go wrong and to try to deal with it as quickly as possible. Um, so we had some kind of complicated stuff with the Hades launch insofar as we had a big and exciting special offer as part of the launch, which was that we were giving away uh, our previous game, Pyre, completely for free if you pick up Hades, and it's a giftable copy. So we wanted to make sure that um, if you already, you know, if you're a fan of Supergiant, you already have Pyre, there's still some value there. You can give the copy to someone else. Um, mechanically, it makes it a little bit different because the copy goes into your Steam inventory rather than being added directly uh, to your library. So we had to manage uh, some, some issues around that and some communication around that. Some folks would be like, 
where's Pyre? I don't have it. It's like, oh, it's in, don't worry, it's right there in your library. Uh, sorry, not in your library, in your inventory. Yeah, things like that. Uh, we also launched uh, our soundtrack, which like the game, uh, the soundtrack itself is not done, but our soundtrack already has close to like two hours of awesome Darren Corb music on it. So you're basically like launching a bunch of products at the same time and, and managing the communication around that and, um, and, and basically, you know, checking for any customer support issues and, and addressing those as quickly as possible. Caitlin, what are you setting live? I'm going with Instagram first. Nice. <laughs> it's the most stressful because you can't do it from the computer. You have to do it from your phone? So to, yeah, you have to do it from your phone. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's truly the texting generation ability. <laughs> uh, same copy as Twitter. It Whatever's tends to be on social our, media. Our, our, our base language for social media. Nice. And then after this, I'll have to do uh, Facebook net as well and continue to monitor Instagram, Facebook, and back to our Discord, where we're getting a lot of very good-hearted people and also where we're getting a lot of our reports of potential issues. Yes. And then transferring that to our communications channel to make sure that the things that go wrong can get solved. Can you tell me what you're working on, Darren? trying to find the DLC of the soundtrack on my computer. Steam says I have downloaded it and it is installed, but that does not appear to be the case. I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. So we gave ourselves an hour to make sure everything is working and we're getting some of the first feedback, which is it's mostly working. Um, people are able to purchase the game on Steam and get their free giftable copy of Pyre which is cool. Um, that's something we were interested in doing, you know, partly because uh, we thought it would be a, a great and competitive offering and a way to get a lot of players in to, uh, to our, our expanded early access. And also, um, you know, anyone who might be skeptical about early access can get one of our finished games and maybe that will help, help them feel um, like it's worth taking a chance on. I don't, I've never had a giftable thing in my Steam library, so I'm trying to check if we received a giftable copy of Pyre, and I don't know how to do that. Hey, well, yeah. I've redeemed Hades after redeeming Pyre, yeah. and I went through with it, and it said, and I haven't, I don't know where to check for a giftable copy of Pyre. Uh, it should be in your inventory. Okay, great. Uh, I need Pyre. My new item, Pyre. I can gift this. It's a gift copy. Who's it gone to? I don't know, man. I've, I've basically made every friend, even before I worked here, I basically made everyone I know play our games, so. Alright, we're looking at a cool thing. Let's hope it's still there. <laughs> Let's hope it's still there. <laughs> hey! It's gorgeous. Nice. Look at that. Nice. You gotta take over. We took over nice. the whole thing. We took it all over. Nice. Nice work. <laughs> it just belonged to us. <laughs> so it's been uh, three hours, four hours since we started all the Steam activity and game is up. People are uh, purchasing it. Um, it's in the Steam top 10 right now. And uh, there's the weird feeling that I've come to identify as a type of sadness. <laughs> which is we're running out of things to do. Um, there's plenty to do, like actual stuff to do, but we're running out of things to do today on the launch. Um, so yeah, now we just kind of sit back and uh, watch how people receive it and see, see how that all goes. So yeah, back to waiting. Yeah, we're meeting. I think we put the fears in Slack. I need to pull oh, yeah, we out did. of the strategy channel real quick. So I will overview the fears, then we'll go through them one by one. And then after that, JP can leave. 
cam camera stays though? No. It's ironic that an early access launch would like be more stable than like a full game release. I mean, I've talked about that in our yeah. bigger meetings. I think it's actually, you know, it's extended to everything, right? Yeah. The game being stable and playable at all points in development, unlike, you know, when nobody, if we don't force everybody to do a play test, yeah. no one plays it and it's not, it's not stable. Where it is like, yeah, it would have only been Steam specific Steam things, which other than the person who tried to run it through their Steam link, Onto like a Samsung, onto oh, a Samsung I missed that one. TV, yeah. and it and then it mostly worked except the volume buttons on the TV like triggered like caused an error. <laughs> Probably sent something. a bunch of great uh, data yeah, to Samsung. Alice's, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alice's <laughs> comment was funny that somebody else tried to run it on their like refrigerator, <laughs> on their like smart in their, smart fridge in their, in their Tesla wall going down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the first step was. Would people give the game a chance, uh, given some of the heat around the Epic Game Store on Steam? So what's our review on that? It seems I think like it's the just scrolling within bounds. Yeah, it's that's what I would say. Didn't I spill know. out of the discussion forums. No. Kind of a little bit in the reviews. No. Yeah. Uh, very. Yeah. It's just kind of like it's it's there. It continues to be there. It's not. It it it, it didn't it didn't. Kind of go off the. Our, our fear was that it would go off the charts and kind of be worse than than expected, and it was not worse than expected. There's yeah. literally one review about it so far, right? It's one just review. that first guy. There's or, a lot, but oh, Greg has been yeah. in the. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Steam reviews. It's just there's only one. Yeah, review well, it, it clearly. Reviews. I mean, not knock on knock on wood, but it clearly has not substantially affected the reviews at the moment. Yeah. Um, so that's very very good. The the initial momentum of the reviews is probably telling. Like I think if you're Reviews survive the first day unless you then go and do something boneheaded. It's probably uh, likely to sort of hold the line, uh, relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, so you get like yeah. the critical mass of like, hey, people think this is a really good game, so I'm not gonna yeah. review it negatively. And some people, there, I, I think when a bunch of people do like something, it, like it happens all the time with Metacritic. Also, it it always goes down. Like, like there become if if people really like something, it creates a backlash of people who go in with intent to not like it, and then they they do that and stuff, but it, it still just sort of balances out. That part has been our experience of bringing our games to all sorts of platforms. Yeah. Too, right? It's like as soon as we do it, the yeah, and the, a lot of the frustration goes It's nice, there's a handful of reviews of people who just it, just bought it and then immediately wrote, I have put 300 hours yeah, into, into this game, and here is my I see. review of it. and Because yeah. they've been playing the other version. Yeah, and they, they, they just write about ETS in there, which is... Okay. So the game comes out on Steam and uh, it has a really good day one and we're like cool that was a really strong day one like people seem happy uh, everyone can play the game it's like one of our most stable launches uh, the user reviews are starting to look pretty good but it's really early and um, then on the second day it did as well as the first day and then on the third day it did as well as the first day and then suddenly you start to have this sense like, oh my God, it's like almost embarrassing. You're like, okay, hold on a second now. <laughs> it was quite amazing to see that like, hey, our early adopter fans, turns out uh, they are representative of of like a larger audience. They are just fans. Um, and uh, and a lot of people wanted to play a lot of Hades um, and that was starting to show up really quickly in a matter of days in how the game was performing and in how customers were talking about the game and then how people started talking about the game on social media and in forums and in our Discord. And, and then uh, suddenly, you know, you realize, holy crap, uh, we like really have something here. The really eye-popping thing among numerous eye-popping things that happened after the Steam launch was the reviews of the game were really, really positive. For the first couple of days, we told ourselves that this is just the reviews coming from people who've enjoyed the game in early access thus far. They're just there to support us, and thank you folks so much. We really appreciate that support. 
but we, we, we just couldn't really believe that those kind of review scores were like really, really happening to us because they're better um, than any of our previous games. It was shocking. I, I, I was shocked and I continue to be somewhat shocked by it. The part that was like truly and utterly shocking, the performance was great, everything was good, was the 98% overwhelmingly positive review score, um, which was higher than any of our previous games. And we are a studio who has been really privileged and blessed to release games that people uh, think really highly of. And, you know, we always want one of our games, when it comes out, like to have the potential to be someone's favorite game. And uh, Hades was like turning out to be like a lot of people's favorite thing from us. Anyway, it's not even done. I, I do think players are reviewing some of the promise of the game. You do see that theme sometimes of like, oh man, it's, it's so good and it's not even done, right? So they're probably imagining ways in which it might get even better. So a really important question is, will we as a development team like live up to whatever those expectations are that we've created? But on the other hand, hopefully again, we've been very upfront about what is still to come about this game. The user reviews were, were nutty. Um, we were so excited and then uh, very quickly uh, just got into the, into the game developer place or into the, into the super giant place. I don't know if it's the same, which is like, God, what happens if it goes to 97? Like, what will it mean? That's because the actual like meaning behind it, whatever, if it was a lower or higher number, is like you didn't fuck it up. Like a whole bunch of people really, really like it. They're really, really happy with their purchase. They're really excited to see where it's going to go. They have faith in you as a game developer. You like earned it. You earned it from them. They didn't have to sit down and write your review. They didn't have to do any of that. Um, but they did. And uh, you totally made sure that they had a worthwhile experience with the time they spent with your game, which is, you know, uh, never to be taken for granted. So that part of it was really, really nice. And so I think when that started happening, it's like, oh my God, I don't know. Like, what does it mean? What does it all mean? And, you know, we're asking each other what it means. It means that it is possible that a decade in, that this is some of the best work we've ever done together, which would be crazy um, as an idea. Like it would be crazy because it like validates the whole the whole point, right? Which is like, uh, you know, if we could do this together for a really long time, it would it would be it would be meaningful and make stuff uh, that is meaningful to other people, which is cool, which was really cool. Hey, it is uh, Saturday, August 17th, and I'm red in the face because I just got back from a run. And while on that run, as tends to be the case, uh, I had an idea, and it was that, oh damn, we haven't been filming nearly enough stuff because we are starting to do some real important work toward a deadline coming up way down in December but that's how far ahead we have to plan. This particular deadline is uh, the launch of Hades on Steam. Um, much sooner than December 10th, when it will be launching, uh, is the announcement, which is coming up on Thursday this week, day after my birthday. It's gonna be a busy week. Um, so today, I started putting together our Steam coming soon page here uh, in the comfort of my, uh, what passes for a home office place where uh, I've been doing a great deal of work while at Supergiant Games since the good old Bastion days. So um, let's see what we have so far. I'm going to turn this thing around. 